Intel, giving you huge amounts of free performance and dropping graphics card pricing. Also, you want to get Discord on the PS5? You can do that now, as well as unlock some free performance on NVIDIA's graphics cards by tweaking one little setting. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to start off today talking about a big announcement that Intel made with regards to their GPUs, because no longer can AMD be regarded as the fine wine GPU manufacturer. No, that title's going to go to Intel, or at least that's what their marketing wants you to think about them, because they're showcasing all of the performance improvements that they've had since they launched their Arc series of graphics cards, indicating that they've gotten 43% faster FPS in DX9 games and a 60% smoother versus their launch driver in DX9 games, making a much better gaming experience for where the weak points were in their Arc series cards, because that was the big kind of hampering point of the Arc launch was that they knew that they were bad in DirectX 9 games. So think things like CSGO, etc. Those were the ones that were performing poorly. Intel was very forthcoming about that, thankfully, and it wasn't something that you just discovered once the G GPUs got reviewed by third party manufacturers, but you can see on average Intel really promoting the fact that their graphics cards have gotten significantly better from launch. But then on top of that, there's more improvements that are happening, not in just direct X nine games, but at 1080p on average, they're seeing up to a 77% improvement, 1440p up to 87% improvement, but it's not just DX nine games. It's also DX 11 and DX 12 games, which is more of the modern video games that you're going to be playing with them publishing this slide showing the 1080p average FPS per dollar normalized compared to the launch driver and then also normalized compared to the RTX 3060, showing that the new GPU, the Arc A750, is just a much better value than it was previously, but it's going to get even better because the software that they're including is going to be slightly more usable. This came up a lot when people started using the Arc series GPUs and even came up very heavily in Linus's attempt to switch over to Arc was the fact that their software was just pretty bad and it worked as an overlay where it like didn't always work like that and so they have actually made it so that you can use it as a standalone desktop app and not just as an overlay which should hopefully make it a little bit more functional but then not only that they also came out and showed that hey we're just we're just going to drop the price of the arc a750 used to be 289 now it's all the way down to 249 so a 40 dollar price drop improving their performance with their drivers getting things to run faster but then also decreasing the the price to make things more competitive and considering that they're targeting the RTX 3060 with the Arc A750, that's just 249 is a good price considering the 3060 still selling for about $400 brand new. You can get it close to 350, sometimes MSRP of 329, but for the most part, they're like $150 more than that, which makes them not as good of a value. And if Intel can continue to keep to their word, continue to advance with drivers, we might see a really strong showing from them. And it gets me even more excited for what's going to be coming down the pipeline. So Intel releasing better drivers, making sure their graphics cards are improving, dropping the price to keep them super competitive in the market. This is what we want out of a third GPU manufacturer. We knew it wasn't going to be perfect at launch, that they were going to have to go slog through it, get through the software, but they're doing all of the right moves when it comes to the graphics cards. I just, I really like how they've handled it. Ryan Shrout and Tom Peterson going on every podcast and every platform saying, hey, we know that this is not going to do well in certain games. You should be aware of that before we even have third party reviewers come out with it. And so we're going to price it according to its poor performance and they've done that. They've kept to their word. They really have brought a decent experience with everything that's going on. And I personally am enjoying it. That's that's my I like the way Intel has entered the GPU market. Let me know what you think about them down below in the comments while I let you know what I think about nothing forever. It's yeah, it's a thing. It's an AI generated Seinfeld show or a Seinfeld ripoff that's debuting on Twitch right now, which it's it's running perpetually. You can watch it if you want. We'll leave a link in the video description, but it's just AI generated in the dialogue, the speech, the direction with the camera cuts, char character focus, shot length, scene length, character movement, and music all being AI generated, which Seinfeld being a show about nothing lends itself very well to just being AI generated. It's odd to watch to say the least. It does require some manual intervention by the people who are running the show every once in a while, but it's something to at least experience once and then you know 
I don't know if you want to come back to it, but who knows? Maybe it's, maybe it'll be a hit show and then they'll just end it by going to jail, which I better never find Reese there, okay? Because he needs to be of upstanding moral character in order for us to get him his American citizenship. Reese, that's a, that's a deep dive, but what do you got for the deals today? Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Coming to you not so live from sunny, then rainy, then sunny, then rainy Pretoria, and I cannot keep up. Hopefully you guys can keep up with today's deals though, starting with the Hyper Duo Pro. This is what they call their seven in two USB-C hub for MacBooks. The Pro version comes with a little pop-out gigabit ethernet port, which which honestly would have been lovely when I still had a MacBook. But don't worry, you don't actually need a MacBook. It comes with a little adapter so you can use it with any device that has USB-C. And at only $60, it is $39.99 off. But switching over to RAM, we have the Corsair Vengeance 32 gig kit of DDR5 running at 4,800 megahertz at CL40. The set is going for only $119.99, which is $180 and one cent off. And then if you like insane deals and you don't mind picking up refurbished, then you can grab yourself an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 Founders Edition. It is refurbished, so take that for what it is. You never know exactly what condition you're going to get it in. But they have one available for only $819.97, which is likely the only one. And you're going to have to be fast if you want to be the one to pick this up. And like always, you can find the links to these deals and more in the video description down below. And with that, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thank you, Reese. I wish we could have done that together, which if we tried on YouTube, maybe we could because YouTube is adding a go live together feature to their live streaming app on their phone, which will allow two creators to stream simultaneously to their viewers and aggregate them together. Twitch has had this with like streaming parties. You can make this happen. So YouTube rolling out that feature. Twitter, on the other hand, rolling back on some features or at least rather rolling back on free features. OK, you have to pay them for it now, specifically when it comes to API access. They're going to be shutting that down, the free access to their API and going to start making developers pay for it starting next week on February 9th. And this likely will impact a lot of different small projects that use Twitter's API to just make Twitter more functional, like things that allow you to read threads more concisely or remind you of certain things. All of that will have to be paid for. This likely is going to hit smaller developers a little bit more or the people who just wanted to make Twitter a better experience for themselves. And so they coded something, used the API for that. It does make a lot of sense why Twitter would have to do this. They have to service the debt that Elon Musk took out to buy the company, which is a lot of money. It's over a billion dollars a year that they have to pay back and just interest on it. So they have to find the money somewhere. And this is likely where they're going to find it by making the site less enjoyable for everybody overall and forcing devs to pay for it. And what otherwise they could probably just be like, well, I, I'm not making any revenue off of this. Like I'm, Twitter's not sharing any sort of the profit. They're not giving me any ad cut. I'm not benefiting off of this of any way. So why would I pay for this? Eh, but you know, for the ones who are gonna pay for it, it's a little bit of extra cash. But speaking of what's gonna cost a lot, you want a mouse with less material? You, you see how this is a full mouse and you got like, dense plastic here and Razor says, no, no. OK, we go super light. We get rid of everything. OK, we make it out of magnesium. We cut holes in it. We make it super light, super duper omega light coming in at only 49 grams, but a two hundred and eighty dollar price tag. The more you buy, the less you get. And but it's not just the light size, the lack of materials. It also has a whole bunch of other features like the Razer Focus Pro 30K optical sensor, the optical mouse switches. It's got the hyper polling wireless with four thousand hertz polling rate, 60 hour battery battery life charges in under nine minutes. It's going to be available on February 11th. I'm not in the super ultra lightweight category where I want holes in my mouse. Some people want that. I, I'm on a trackball, my friends. I'm clearly not a gaming wizard here. But if you want to be a gaming wizard, Hogwarts Legacy is coming out soon. If you want to chat with your friends while you're playing with it, Discord support now officially out in the beta software for the PlayStation 5 7.00 beta has the Discord voice chat for the PS5, as well as a few other features like 1440p variable refresh rate support, which is going to help for better things, imported save data migration, as well as Sony announcing that they have sold a heckin ton of these consoles, 32.1 million. That's the total sales number, but selling 7.1 million in Q4 of last year, which is 28% of all consoles sold and an 82% increase. So they, they've really worked through their supply issues. Sony having a great time also indicating that their games are selling incredibly well with God of War Ragnarok having 11 million sales to date and it only came out in November. It seems to be a wildly successful game. And I can believe Sony when it comes to the availability of consoles, like I can easily go buy. It is the God of 
War Ragnarok bundle, but I can buy this. This has been available for weeks on Best Buy on my end where I can just go buy a PlayStation 5 console if I want. And if you want to enjoy Dead Space, don't play it on console, my friends. Play it on an NVIDIA GPU. And specifically, you're going to want to enable resizable bar because it's being found out that if you do that yourself, because NVIDIA has to whitelist games for resizable bar to be active and they have not whitelisted Dead Space yet, but somebody found a way to do it through the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. And what they found is that they can get a significant performance upgrade on their RTX 4080. I think I've seen between 25 and 78% extra performance, which seems to be really good. Resizable bar doesn't apply to every game everywhere when it comes to NVIDIA. It has to be approved on a per game basis. And this was actually reported over in the NVIDIA subreddit. And somebody asked one of the NVIDIA representatives, hey, what's going on here? And they said, it's not so straightforward. We test games across multiple levels and across each new build of a game before release. So while some users may see a bump in performance in one level or map, if you try a different level on map, the game assets might be quite different and users may not benefit as much or a worse experience or regression in the FPS slash frame times. As for the Dead Space remake, we are still testing resizable bar performance, so there is a chance that we may enable it in a future driver. So it's not dead, but in case you want to try to get that extra performance yourself, you're on an NVIDIA GPU, you want to play the Dead Space Remake, which I've heard really good things about, you can enable it yourself. And I'm going to enable myself to stop, okay? You stop enabling me with the hot news because I need to be done for this weekend, okay? I can't be here with you forever. I'll be back on Monday with more of the hottest tech news around, my friends. Until then, go live your life to the fullest. Oh.